Spirit of Detroit podcast. Like, comment, subscribe for more thought provoking content like this. Click the bell icon button. I am the host with the most, Avery Giovanni. This is Spirit of Detroit podcast, your realistic take on the Detroit Lions. Remember, if you're not getting real talk, it must be fake news. Hey, I want to hit y'all with some. Obviously, you see the thumbnail, and I know this is going to disturb some fans i know it's going to be controversial however you say it as you know i'm a deployed united states army soldier honestly we got to get real i want to get real i'm not trying to be mike valenti i'm not trying to be terry foster adam Baydoon. i'm not trying to be one of those people i just want to be real enough that we start thinking And we start grading people critically. And I remember when I first got here into theater, this is what we call it in the military, we first got into the combat zone. People was like, you can't act like that. You can't do that. They were real critical to point out the flaws early and correct those flaws. To acknowledge them and move on. So that's what I want to do today. I'm not trying to call for nobody's job. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I am acknowledging the flaws. Brad Holmes, in year two, had three picks in the top 40. He had three picks in the top 40 of the draft. Those three picks had to be starters. If I rewind back to all the draft coverage from everyone, the Wolver Sports, the Luke G's, the 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 Micro Mics, the you know um the Lions Syndicate, even guys like Motor City, Dosa Dion Everybody said these three picks are starters. Clearly, they are starters. We had a general consensus of this is what we're trying to do. Get three starters in the top 40. We did not do that. But if I rewind further, Brad Holmes has more hits than misses. That's what the narrative is. If I go back to the free agency... His first year in 2021. If I go back to free agency, we signed Brashad Perryman, Tyrell Williams, Alex Anzalone, Tim Boyle, Corn Elder, and Roby Coleman. I don't see no hits. And I'm not calling for his job. I'm not doing none of that. I am aware, but we need to be serious about this guy. Because this Nate Sudfeld stuff, this he is great. He is not great. This this I didn't want to draft a quarterback because uh, uh Jared Goff's pride or whatever. I didn't want to put j- pressure on Jared Goff. I think Brad Holmes has set this team back. In several ways, he has set this team back defensively from a quarterback perspective. And from a defensive front perspective, he has set this team back. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait, 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 wait. We didn't need to draft a quarterback. We didn't need to draft. Okay. What about defense? Because right now, the Detroit Lions are projected by ESPN to be the worst defense. And I I must concur that the Detroit Lions will be bottom 20. I must concur that the Detroit Lions are a bottom 16 defense. And might be bottom 20. Strongly, potentially, I think we'll have a higher sack rate than normal. But it all started, to me, with this draft. You could not miss on this draft. 
You could not miss. Whether you went all defense your first three picks or whether you said, look, we're going offense with one pick out of the first three. You could not miss. I felt like that. But his last year free agency, like I, I, to reiterate, he told us Brashad Perryman and Tyrell Williams was our number one and number two receivers. They're no longer on the team. Alex Anzalone is, a, is our linebacker. That's going to be our playmaker. He's, he's a Brad Holmes guy. That's what we heard. He was ranked bottom defensive linebacker. He had the worst PFF rating. Of, we've seen it. The most inconsistent linebacker in the league. We've seen it. I did the film study. We've seen it. Tim Boyle. We're going to get to him later. Corn Elder. Not in the league. Roby Coleman. Don't know where he's at. He's missing. And then to add insult to injury at the end of the preseason last year, you trade for someone who was inevitably going, inevitably going to be cut. You trade for Trinity Benson. Trinity Benson's not on the team. You gave them a fifth round pick. Unbeknownst to me, we had 13 picks. We go in the draft and pick eight people. We trade up, we trade back, we do all these moves to satisfy crowd noise, to satisfy, to sell tickets. And I told Gridiron Blitz this, I told Micro Mike this, I told Raw Detroit this. This was to satisfy some type of critic. This was to satisfy ticket sales. Because you guys wanted a wide receiver. You want an exciting offense. Me, I wanted a dominant defense. Defense does not put fans in the stands. This was a business decision to draft a wide receiver that's not even going to play. But let me move on. Let me get to that. Year one. Let's go back to year one. Year one, Panay Suell, Levi Onwuzarike, Aleem McNeil, Amon Ra, Derek Barnes, Jamar Jefferson, and Melifonwu, not in that order, of course, but Jam Jamar Jefferson's practice squad player. Derek Barnes is inconsistent as heck. Melifonwu, haven't heard from him all summer. We heard he was trying out a safety. We don't know where he is. We don't hear from him. Aleem McNeil is a stud. Amon Ra is a stud. Panay Sewell is a stud. Levi Azarike, where you at? He's a no-show. I didn't even want him from the get-go. Even when he was drafted, I said this was a second-round curse. I said this was not a good player. I said this was a bad player. I said this on live YouTube. I said this. I did the homework on prospects. He was not in my top four or five guys. He was not there. Barmore was a better player. However, you convinced the public that he somehow was going to mess people up. And that was the media attention. He's going to mess people up. And we were sports ran with that narrative. And everybody ran with that narrative. And he never came on the field for real. And when he did show dominance in one game, we, 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 we were so, we were, it was a levity. It was heroic. And let's, let's be real. We have not seen Levi Ronzarike since. He loses weight. He looks great. His back is hurt. He's not playing. He's not going to play for the first month of the, of, the, of, the, of the season. This is what I'm talking about. This is clown stuff. This is clown stuff. But, Panay Sewell, Ali McNeil, Amon Ra, studs. Melifonwo and Barnes got tremendous upside. But year two is what I'm really questioning. I alluded to it before, but now I'm really I'm really hyped up. Like, comment, subscribe for more realistic takes on Alliance. And I'm not trying to be a vulgar individual. I'm not trying to be angry or da 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 da. I know I'm a negative guy. Uh, I'm just a serious guy. You know, I'm not trying to... I know everybody's on a little bit of a high because of hard knocks in the season. I'm not trying to put lipstick on a pig. Okay? 
there are some serious problems with the Detroit Lions. The front seven is a problem. You've addressed this position twice in the draft, multiple times in the draft, in free agency, and you still have no answer. You still have no answer from the front seven. Now, finally, draft number two. Because I could start with free agency, but free agency was good this year. Because all you needed to do was get Shark. And you brought in Kaminsky and you brought in some guys that were very, you know, interested. You retained all your players because you were going to have this mass exodus. You can't have that. So I understand that. I get it. You had to retain Alex Angel. You had to retain. But you missed out on Kazir White. You missed out on several key positions. You brought in a corner that we don't even know if he can play or not. You brought in some individuals that were questionable. I mean, just re-signing Tim Boyle and David Blau was questionable. The fan base, myself, Raw Detroit, all of us could not believe it. But enter the draft. Where you decide to trade up for a wide receiver, we won't see till midseason. Enter the draft where we have three picks in the top 40. We have three picks in the top 35. We have three picks to reiterate. We have three bona fide starters. And guess what happens? Two of them are injured. Two of them will not play. Two of them are to be continued. We have Pascal, who I predicted, didn't like, but predicted. We have... A wide receiver who nobody knew you would even visit. Doesn't even look like he want to be here. We have a wide receiver. And respect to Jamison Williams because we've seen a tape. We know what he is. 1,500 yards. He can take the, take the top off the defense. He can catch something at a 5-yard turn into a 20, 50-yard play. That's incredible, incredible talent. Pickens is doing way much better, though. Pierce is doing way much better, though. There's players that we suspected would go in the second or third round or would be available at the end of the first that are doing way better. So that trade was stupid. That trade was dumb. Matter of fact, if you did do the trade up, you should have got Lloyd out of Utah. You should have got B.J. Raji Jr., okay? Jordan Davis. You could have got that. And now you still need help with your front seven. You're in a bad position. That's clear. That is clear as day. Your only starter out of three picks in the top 50 is Aiden Hutchinson. I could have made that pick. Your mama could have made that pick. Green Bay Packers could have made the pick for us. It was just so obvious. Kirby Joseph is going to need time. Rodrigo is a stud at linebacker, but when your linebackers are so trash, what does that mean? What does that mean? Houston, you cut him. Chase Lucas, he made the team. Will he play? We don't know. I'm confused at the eight people. I'm confused. I am bewildered beyond belief. Let me let me understand this. You drafted eight individuals, perhaps nine, and week one, one of them is starting. You can't make this make sense. So I like to be critical of people very early so I can say, hey, look, I was critical. But to add insult to injury, what made me more upset was the refusal to draft a quarterback. And that's where this video stems from. We rejected the defense. We rejected the need for defense. We rejected the need for backup quarterback. And we have in press conferences trying to make things right. Rod Detroit had a video, let's make things right. I'm confused. 
Nate Sudfeld is not making things right. Matter of fact, you got so concerned with your backup quarterbacks being being so terrible, you even invited them back. One signed with the Vikings and the other is back in the practice squad and they have nothing to show for it. You do not have right now, you do not have a backup you can rely on. You have YouTubers saying that backup is awesome. You have YouTubers saying this, that, and the third. You're telling me, you're telling me that Nate Sudfield, if Jared Goff is the guy and gets hurt, knock on wood, Nate Sudfield is going to lead us to the promised land. You did this to yourself. Sam Howell was projected to go in the first round. He ended up going in the fifth round. We had four or five quarterbacks come off the board after the second round. And still, you didn't draft one. And now you hold in press conferences about Nate Sudfeld. This last week with Nate Sudfeld was rushed. And I understand that a lot of this stuff happened like, look, we need help. You should have recognized something everybody else knew. You are the GM. Who told you Tim Blau, Tim Boyle and David Blau were going to make that same step? Who told you that they were going to be great? Who told you that? And the reality of it is, is you played yourself and the team. You passed on Barmore. He's a stud. You passed on a quarterback. All of those quarterbacks are doing substantially well. You could even got a quarterback in the sixth round and you refused to. And you're going into week one with Aiden Hutchinson, the only starter, Kirby Joseph, Mitchell, Rodrigo. All of these are backup role players. What's going on? What is going on? So I turn to you, Detroit. Are you going to clown him? Are you going to crown him? Are you going to be real about these moves that have been made? These free agent duds? Are you going to be real about these draft pick duds? Are you going to be real about the last year duds? He paraded Perryman in front of me and said that was my number one receiver. And I laughed in his face. I laughed in his face. This is the reality of the Detroit Lions. And I don't want to hear all these positive Lions YouTubers turn the switch and flip the switch week eight. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear them flip the switch. That's what they're going to do. Adam Baydoon, Terry Foster, Lions Farm, you know, they're going to flip the switch. I encourage you to listen to guys like Mark Orm. I encourage you to listen to guys like Lion Syndicate. I encourage you to listen to guys like uh, Micro Mike. I encourage you to listen to a little bit of Lions Nations Unite. I encourage you to listen to even Dose when he's realistic. We have to be realistic. Like, comment, subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this. We had to get this out. We had to. Your backup quarterback is Nate Sudfeld. People are doing videos, videos, film analysis on Nate Sudfeld. It's so funny to do film analysis on a live game. That's, that's hilarious. Not even all 22 film on a live game. That's beautiful. So for more film analysis, please go somewhere else. Because I'm not doing no film on Nate Sudfeld. Okay? I'm just letting that be known right now. There will be I know what to expect from him. I know he can't throw a dig route. I know he's not the guy. Y'all think he's the guy. And that's the difference. Like, comment, subscribe. Love y'all.